If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. So the James Webb Telescope only just launched at the tail end of 2021, but it's already made some insane discoveries that have changed the way astronomers think about space. We're still in the very early stages, so there's no telling what this telescope will pick up in the very near future. But here are just some of the scariest and most mysterious and interesting findings so far. We're starting off the list with the discovery of unbelievable galaxies. These galaxies are nearly the size of the Milky Way, which scientists weren't expecting to see. So why is this? In these deep field images from the telescope, huge galaxies were observed, filled with mature red stars. They look like tiny reddish dots to the powerful telescope, and they came about at the beginning of time, about five to 700 million years after the Big Bang. So astronomers anticipated seeing young and small galaxies in the early universe, but the James Webb observations revealed massive galaxies with old red stars, very different from what they'd expected to see and very different from what the predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, observed. Joe Leia, an astronomy and astrophysics assistant professor at Penn State, explained that the galaxies appeared 50 times more massive than expected, with some reaching the mass of our Milky Way when the universe was only 3% of its current age. Next up, we have the discovery of jumbos. In 2023, the James Webb Space Telescope discovered over 500 rogue planets meaning they don't orbit a star, in the Orion Nebula. Now, researchers have detected mysterious radio signals from a pair of these rogue planets. These planets are known as Jupiter mass binary objects, or jumbos, which I'm gonna call uh, for the duration of this point. James Webb, with its ability to pick up infrared radiation, revealed that about 80 of these rogue planets exist in pairs, dancing around each other at distances ranging from 25 to 400 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Scientists don't really know what to make of these things right now. In fact, they're not even sure if jumbos are planets or entirely new entities larger than planets but smaller than brown dwarfs. So this is already strange, but it's gonna bring us to our next mystery. And that is the mysterious radio signals these jumbos were giving off. So in order to understand these strange objects, researchers wanted to see if they emitted radio waves as different cosmic objects produce unique radio emissions. They looked through archives of observations made by the US National Radio Astronomy Observatory and found that one pair, Jumbo 24, did emit radio waves. This Jumbo pair is the heaviest and has the closest spacing between its two planets. The data showed that the radio waves from Jumbo 24 were steady and strong with a power equivalent to a quarter of a ton of TNT and frequencies of six to eight gigahertz. But there was something very strange going on. The signals lacked circular polarization, which is the presence of magnetic fields, which you typically have with planets. The radio signals from Jumbo 24 were a bit unusual. They didn't match the patterns you'd normally expect from planets brown dwarfs, or pulsars. The researchers considered the possibility of signals coming from an object behind Jumbo 24, but said that was highly unlikely. So they're doing more research into this, but as of right now, it's still a complete mystery. One of the biggest questions everyone has on their mind about space is, of course, is there a life out there other than our own? It's one of the main reasons we want to explore it so badly, after all. Well, the discovery of a very interesting planet called K218b, uh, we may have come closer than ever to answering that very question. The telescope found certain molecules in this planet's atmosphere that could indicate conditions suitable for life. K218b is an exoplanet located in the constellation Leo, about 120 light years away from our solar system. It was discovered in 2019, and ever since, astronomers have been pretty excited about it because of the signs of water vapor in its atmosphere. So this planet was always going to be a point of focus for James Webb. The telescope detected carbon-bearing molecules like methane and carbon dioxide in the planet's atmosphere. This means K218b may have a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and a surface covered by water, meaning there could very well be life. One of the coolest things the telescope spotted 
was a molecule called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. Uh, on Earth, DMS is produced by life, specifically by microscopic organisms like phytoplankton. Now, scientists aren't 100% sure if they really detected DMS in the planet's atmosphere, but there's a chance, and that's pretty cool if it turns out to be the case. Next, let's talk about a terrifying planet that the James Webb Telescope spotted in 2023, VHS 1256b. This planet seems like Tatooine from Star Wars or Arrakis from Dune, except far worse. If you think sand is the worst and just gets everywhere, try living on VHS 1256b. This planet seems like absolute hell caught in a never-ending sandstorm. But there are signs it has some similarities to Earth the atmosphere shows signs of water, methane, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. So there's a chance it could also host life, but uh, aliens that live in a perpetual blistering hot sandstorm may not be the types of creatures we'd want to meet. Seems like they'd probably be a little uh, frustrated. There's that classic saying, the more you know, the less you know. Well, if the James Webb Telescope has proven anything, it's how true that saying really is. It's now found discrepancies with how scientists used to measure the Hubble constant. So first of all, what is the Hubble constant? This refers to how fast galaxies are moving away from us. Imagine the universe as a balloon that's just constantly expanding, and the Hubble constant is the rate at which the balloon is getting bigger. The faster the galaxies are moving away, the higher the Hubble constant. It helps astronomers understand the age and future of the universe, but the rate at which the universe is expanding has never been 100% solved, so scientists figured the James Webb Telescope would be able to shine some light on it, but apparently it revealed more questions than answers. So most models suggest the Hubble constant should be around 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec. One megaparsec is about 3.26 million light years. Not something I can really wrap my head around because I, I, and likely you, don't really have any relatable reference for that. But the point is, some experts are now calculating the constant to be 69.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Others are giving even higher values. So there are questions about the accuracy of our measurements and definitely some gaps in our understanding of the universe. Next up, we have dust. Apparently this stuff is inescapable and has been around a lot longer than we once thought. And if that's not scary, I don't know what else is. Scientists using the James Webb peered into the past and found carbon dust in 10 different galaxies that existed just 1 billion years after the Big Bang. Now, this may not seem all that crazy, but this is actually uh, kind of a big deal. You see, what scientists have always thought is that heavy elements like carbon were created in the hearts of stars. When these stars exploded, they scattered these elements as interstellar dust. Then new stars formed from this dust, making galaxies richer in heavy elements. But the JWST found this carbon dust in galaxies that are only about 10 million years old. That's way faster than their previous theories predicted for the buildup of heavy elements in galaxies. So the question is, how did these young galaxies get so rich in carbon so quickly? So, almost every large galaxy has one thing in common, a supermassive black hole at the center. But what came first, the black hole or the galaxy? Well, scientists once thought supermassive black holes only showed up later in the universe's timeline, after the first stars and galaxies formed. But surprise, the, JW the JWST data hints that these colossal black holes might have been around during the first 50 million years after the Big Bang. In the grand scheme of things, that's very, very early, basically the dawn of time. The team leader, Joseph Silk, explained that these early black holes could have acted like, quote, building blocks or seeds for the galaxies we see today. Instead of forming after the stars, they might have been there from the beginning, influencing star formation. So, ah, the plot thickens, and black holes were already incredibly mysterious before. We really gotta remind ourselves how incredible this planet is. Everything is set up perfectly for life to grow and flourish, unlike 55 Cancri E, which has sent out mysterious signals for almost two decades, but the mystery of these signals may have been solved. So this rocky world was discovered in 2004, 
It's around eight times the size of Earth and sits about 40 light years away. The exoplanet's been emitting strange signals for almost two decades. A recent study suggests that volcanoes on 55 Cancri E might be causing these signals. Periodically, these volcanoes open up and spew out hot gas, forming a temporary atmosphere around the planet, but the extreme heat near its parent star causes this atmosphere to burn off, leaving the planet exposed again until the next outburst. And the mystery is the signals observed when the planet moves in front or behind its parent star, creating a sort of eclipse. Sometimes when it goes behind the star, there's no visible light coming from the planet. Other times, a strong visible light signal is emitted. This is because the planet's proximity to its star triggers outgassing. Giant volcanoes and thermal vents open up, releasing hot carbon-rich elements into the atmosphere. The problem is the planet can't hang on to this atmosphere for long because of the intense heat. It gets blown away, leaving the planet bare until the next outgassing event. So sometimes the planet has an atmosphere, and other times it doesn't, which is pretty odd. And finally, we have the discovery of the oldest known supermassive black hole in the universe. This black hole is luckily extremely far away, 13.2 billion, 13 billion light years uh, away from Earth to be exact. This also means we're observing it as it was about 470 million years after the Big Bang. I still find it nuts how these telescopes are basically looking back in time. This black hole is in a galaxy named UHZ-1, and this black hole is believed to be born massive, with an estimated mass between 10 and 100 million times our sun. The discovery of this thing has astronomers wondering even more about how supermassive black holes form. Did they emerge from the collapse of massive gas clouds or from explosions of the first stars? Well, apparently this one, well, apparently this one massive, well, apparently this one, Massive. Well, apparently this one was massive from the start, meaning it could have formed differently than how other black holes are thought to form, slowly growing and expanding over time as they consume more matter. This one could have had a head start, expanding much faster than what the modeling it used to suggest. So basically, that is to say, from every point on this list, we just don't know really what's going on up there in space. And that's kind of uh, the fear of unknown. Is like the biggest fear humans can have, right? With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.